sea lanes remain open to secure the lines of trades, with political and military seafaring nations projecting their power at sea. And nothing represents greater strength than the presence of an aircraft carrier than the most valuable sea-based assets that project both tactical air power and anti-surface warfare. In today's feature, we will look into some of the largest aircraft carriers currently voyaging across the cast ocean and what these ships are capable of. Before getting into the grand scheme of things, please hit that like button. Let us know in the comments below. What do you think is the best one? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get your daily dose of entertainment. Without further ado, let's hop into it. Aircraft Carriers and the U.S. Navy As of 2021, there are about 43 aircraft carriers operated by 14 navies worldwide. Varying in size and capabilities, the aircraft carriers can launch their air powers in three ways. The Catapult Assisted Takeoff Recovery or Cattle Bar. The Short Takeoff Barrier Arrested Recovery or STO Bar. The Quick Takeoff and Vertical Landing. The U.S. Navy, with the highest fleet of aircraft carriers worldwide, operates 11 large nuclear-powered carriers, all with cattle bar capability. The maritime arena has seen rapid and intense development in the past centuries, increasing maritime activities from seaborne trade, commercial fishing, oil and gas exploration, and military activities. The Ford Class The United States aircraft carrier fleet is the pride of the country and the dreaded nightmare of any adversary. It was named after Gerald Rudolph Ford, the 38th President of the United States of America. The Gerald R. Four Line designated CVN-78 and CVN-79 can carry more than 75 aircraft and 4,500 crew on board. The Ford of multi-purpose nuclear-powered aircraft carriers is slowly phasing the Nimitz class and has already made great strides in the technical side of things and its appearance. It is exceeding the already record-breaking physical parameters of its predecessors. Comparisons with the Nimitz class Compare the 1,100-foot-long and 256-foot-wide Ford versus the 1,092-foot-long and 252-foot-wide Nimitz, and the increased weight over 100,000 tons of Ford versus 97,000 tons on the Nimitz. Previously, aircraft carriers were considered a separate mini-navy within the U.S. Navy itself. Because of the sheer power of the pieces of equipment and the number of gears and the personnel they carried, the Ford class has taken it all to a new level. It will enable the U.S. Navy to quickly deploy its aircraft wherever needed, reducing dependence on the foreign military to zero. The Ford-class wings will be able to destroy hundreds of targets every day for weeks at a time, increasing the effectiveness of U.S. military power in combat against any adversary. Increased number of sorties Let's look at the new United States aircraft carrier's most significant advantages over its Nimitz-class ancestors. One of the fundamental indicators for an aircraft carrier is the sorties made per day. Ford's design changed from a steam-powered catapult to the most efficient electromagnetic system, with a new braking mechanism to stop the planes on return. This also allowed for more clearance on deck, which is a clear advantage for unobstructed aircraft launching. The number of sorties produced. The Navy intends to increase sorties by 33% to 160 sorties per day under normal conditions, with the possibility of expansion to as many as 270 sorties in increasingly dangerous situations. Now imagine how catastrophic 200 smart bomb-carrying planes in a day can be to the enemy. More significant emphasis on the use of UAV. The Aircraft Carrier's Drone System By minimizing the load on the aircraft, the new catapult and braking will allow the Ford to launch many more different drones than the Nimitz class offered. That means both light and heavy devices drones for gathering intelligence delivering weapons to points of conflicts and refueling aircraft. As for aviation, the Ford can carry up to 90 aircraft, helicopters, and UAV as part of an air group. Increased electrical power The Nimitz nuclear reactors aren't capable of generating enough power to fuel all the combat systems the U.S. Navy needs for the foreseeable future. On the other hand, the Ford uses two smaller but more productive reactors, providing enough power for a flagship vessel with a potential for decades to come and an eye toward further modernization. Its power might especially be needed for directed energy, weapons like a futuristic laser. The aircraft carrier's nuclear reactors could power several countries like Monaco, Liechtenstein, Andorra, and San Marino at the same time for a year. Weapon Handling Efficiency The logistics of the Nimitz armament were designed many decades ago and were not optimized for today's innovative weaponry. This was a major limiting factor in sortie speed. On the Ford, Engineers markedly eased the movements of combat units stationed on the aircraft carrier and automated most functions, 
reducing the need for humans, which significantly accelerated vital decision-making in emergencies. Improved radars. Radars play a critical in the life of an aircraft carrier. But the Nimitz class needs multiple to perform its functions. From detection to escorting and to target identification. On the other hand, the Ford can replace a whole set of radars with a single multifunctional one, which in addition, takes up much less space. This system has higher sensitivity than its predecessor and is much easier to maintain. The smaller space required for radar deployment has reduced its visibility for its enemies, which is also an undeniable advantage. Enlarged Cockpit Moving a radar further along the hole increased the efficiency of the aircraft carrier's cockpits as with the Nimitz. The Ford uses over four acres of deck space, but its use has become much more intelligent. It makes it possible to maintain a well-balanced operation of attack fighters, airborne radars, jammers, propellers, and of course, drones simultaneously, increasing the daily number of air wing sorties. Head start for the future. The Navy has gradually upgraded the 10 existing Nimitz-class aircraft carriers to meet modern threats and challenges. However, due to these upgrades by 2005, RAND's reports found that the weight of the ships had also increased substantially, shifting their center of gravity to a critical point, so much so that increasing it further was deemed unacceptable. As for the Ford class, military experts estimate that it will not have similar problems, even after several decades of active service. Reduced Staffing Requirements Personnel takes up the lion's share of aircraft carrier operating costs as thousands of people need to be supplied. The Nimitz class was designed with relatively low workforce costs at the time and limited automation capabilities. At the same time, the Ford was designed to replace human resources with technology to reduce the number of crew needed in costs by 20%. The Nimitz has often had to perform personnel reductions of hundreds of sailors, but the Ford is unlikely to have a staffing problem. Low Maintenance Costs Costs maintenance affects both offshore and shipyard. Certain features of Ford's design will significantly reduce maintenance requirements. For example, the aircraft's reactors are much easier to pair than the Nimitz's, and that's even though they can generate much more power. The multifunctional radar and electromagnetic catapult are also many times easier to maintain than their predecessors. These and other applications of new technology will come together to save the Navy billions of dollars. Lower cost of operation. Building aircraft carriers is expensive, of course but it's much cheaper for America's budget than most of the lifetime maintenance costs. Saving on crewing maintenance and substantially reducing other costs will make the final price of Ford-class aircraft carriers at least $4 billion cheaper than the Nimitz. During its 50-year life cycle, given its technological superiority, that's a definite win. Problems faced by the Ford class Unfortunately, even the most advanced hardware has its shortcomings. And the Ford class was no exception, facing its problems. Voltage Regulator Failure In 2016, one of the voltage regulators on the main turbine generators failed, damaging the rotors. Engineers managed to isolate the problem though and quickly solved it. But a much more significant threat to the ship's operation is the instability of the amals mechanism. The New Electromagnetic Catapult System Unreliability Since it was developed simultaneously with the carrier's design, the system is not yet reliable enough to be used in stressful combat conditions. The main disadvantage was the interconnection of the catapults. If one of them should fail, you have to wait until all flights on the other catapult are completed for repairs or suspend the flight altogether until repairs are made. While experts are working on this issue, they will also have to make that systems fail nor more frequently than once every 4,166 launches, rather than once every 400 launches as it does now. All of this is subject to upgrades and associated costs of tens of millions of dollars, However, the ultimate goal is worth it. After all, by investing millions today, the Navy could save billions of dollars in the future by using the latest technology. Will the Ford class ever sink? The most exciting thing about the Ford compared to the Nimitz and all previous aircraft carriers is the zero chance of it ever sinking. First, its displacement is insane. So, even an entire ocean full of water would not be enough for it to sink. And second, only a few countries with nuclear weapons have the potential to destroy the aircraft carrier. And believe us, they really would need at least a nuclear explosion for it to go down. Today, the Ford is unsinkable, and it's one of the safest and helpful combat systems in the US arsenal. The United States has a fleet and budget large enough to keep more than 10 aircraft carriers in service. Is the operating cost too much? When it comes to the fundamental question of cost, 
A simple calculation shows that building, operating, and maintaining aircraft carriers costs the Navy only 1% of the federal budget. One aircraft carrier, Gerald Ford, costs taxpayers more than $13 billion. But despite what critics say, even when the cost of escort ships is taken into account, the reality is that the U.S. Navy would need tens, if not hundreds of times more warships if it tried to fight conflicts without aircraft carriers. There are currently five ships in the Ford class, one commissioned aircraft carrier, one launched, one under construction, and two aircraft carriers scheduled to begin construction in 2023 and 2027. What will be the fate of the further projects of aircraft carriers is still unknown. But one thing is for sure, even with its shortcomings, the Ford class was a massive leap for the military in terms of technology over the past 40 years. Deservedly, it received the status of the menace of the sea, alongside nervous glances of neighbors like Russia and China, who, from time to time, contest the United States in superiority for marine territory.